Hi, I'm Joel, and welcome to the next in our series on coding with headless CMS and AI. This is a really exciting one. I can't wait to compare GitHub Copilot, Claude Code CLI, and Cursor to find out who is going to solve our coding challenge this time. Last time, we created a component from scratch. This time, I got something really exciting in mind. Can't wait to let you know what it is. Let's jump in. Okay, so this time we're gonna actually be doing a change to a component to enable something called personalization. And personalization is one of those things in CMS that a lot of people aren't really quite sure how to do. So what I've got is I've got AI that's gonna write all this code and actually make the changes in the CMS for me based on some ideas that I have on how I wanna implement that. So let's look at what we've got so far. So we're digging in here and we've already got in our CMS, we've got a list of industries um, that are really audiences. I've called these some pretty generic kind of term for how we wanna do our personalization. So I wanna show different content based on what audience that I detect that this person is coming from. And we've already got a little bit of that done on our homepage. Let's just jump into it and kind of see how that is. We've got this thing called a personalized logo strip that's on here and the way that works is very basic. It uses the list of what we call these logos um, that are on here, but each one of those has a link to an audience. Okay, so that's how this works. It's called a customer item. It's linking to, to all the different uh, audiences on there. So based on you know, those different logos, we're gonna show the, the proper one. Let's actually look at how this works in our implementation. So we'll jump into Web Studio here, which shows us a preview of our website right inside the CMS, which is a really nice feature. So if we scroll down a little bit, to this logo strip, we can see that it actually has, you know, all the different audiences and we made it super clear that it's like, you know, what industry they are. This is obviously commerce. This is obviously something else. I think this is the commerce one. This is, you know, something else, maybe uh, retail. This one's, you know, higher education, a bunch of different things. This is healthcare. And what we've built is a little picker here. We can say, you know, pick, I just wanna show the e-commerce retail one. So we re reload the screen and we can see it's only showing the e-commerce stuff here. I wanna do that exact same thing, but on this main hero. So this hero component is called the background hero. And by default, it's just showing the fields that are on here by default. Um, you know, th this is all it's got and we can actually choose the background for this. We're on the grayscale background right now, um, but there's a lot of different fields that are on here. What I'm proposing is that on this component, we actually, create a nested linked content list on there that has the same fields, but on each one of those items, you also get to pick the audience so that this component will actually pick the, when there's an audience that it's detected, it's gonna pick the nested linked content list and pull the item from there. Otherwise, it's gonna show the content, that, the default content that's on the component itself. So it's a pretty abstract con concept and we need all that code to be written by AI, and we need AI to actually use our MCP server to do the changes, because I don't want to have to copy and paste all these fields around, so I want to do a code-first approach. So the way this is going to work, I'm going to actually do this in, and we're going to show it in three different screens, if I can hopefully get that set up for you, and we're going to show Claude Code doing that in a CLI. It'll be inside the terminal window of Visual Studio Code, VS Code. I'm going to use GitHub Copilot inside VS Code as well, and that's gonna use Claude Sonnet 4. And then I'm gonna use Cursor um, to do that in a separate project. Each one of those, it's, it's gonna be the same project, the same starting point. They are all gonna have their own instructions uh, file and all that's been set up. So the project's already been optimized. They'll be in their own branch. We'll get to compare how fast they are and how accurate they are with doing it. Um, now, the one thing is we only have one instance of agility for this right now. So I'm actually gonna split it off into three separate instances for it to work with so that we can be sure that, you know, we can actually compare in agility in the headless CMS who does the better job at setting all that stuff up and see how it actually goes. There's a bit of setup I have to do on my end. Let's go through the prompt actually before we get too far into it, which is gonna be essentially reiterating what I just told you. So I have a personalized component called personalized logo strip, which we showed, which already uses the company list in agility to determine which items to show based on the selected audience on those items. I wanna do something similar to that, but with the background hero component, we wanted that nested list on there, plus a link content drop down to the audiences list. That way we can choose what audience for each one of those items on that component. 
The component fields can be used as default when no audience is selected, but when an audience is selected, I want to show the fields from the appropriate item on the nested list. This is the cool part here. I want them to create all the code first, then, you know, using that personalized logo strip as an example of how to do that, and then create the content model in agility and update the background hero component model in there. So we'll see how well each of them does. I'm gonna have three different instances of agility for this to work in so we can compare not only the code in each of the branches, but also how it actually did inside agility. Uh, and then I'm gonna show you as we go through here. So give me a second to set all this up and I'll be right back. Looks like everything's we're good to go. Uh, everything's, we've got the same thing pasted into each one. We've got three different branches. And uh, yeah, let's just kind of see how this all happens here. Um, what's interesting is that they all take different approaches, even though I think they're all actually using pretty much the same model. And what I noticed is that the Claude code is really fast. It just like grinds through the tasks, sets up what it needs to do. I do like how cursor creates a plan for what it's going to do and then kind of iterates through that. Um, but it looks like, yeah, they're both, it looks like pretty much we're getting, you know, very similar results in terms of creating the component first. So it's creating the component, which I really like. I like when it creates, it, it like follows and actually does what you say, right? That's cool. Um, in this case, I think that the, it looks like, Copilot is having a really hard time um, kind of sort of figuring stuff out. And I'm trying to open, uh, you can see I kind of opened some files that it was working on as it, as it went through. Um, but I really like how fast Claude code just kind of cranked through everything it needed to do uh, and really kind of fired away at it. What I noticed is that Copilot had a lot of problems um, once it started calling the MCP server. So I had to, you see it was the first time I'd called that MCP server. And so I had to enable it a couple times. So that took a little extra time. And I just pretty much for all of it, I just said, you know, go for this session, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, I didn't have to do that in Claude code because I had already set that up. So it had a little bit of an advantage um, because I had let it automatically do MCP stuff. Um, but it's really cool to kind of watch this and see what's going on. What I'm interested to see is that if Claude code, which I think is a really good option, gets more integrated within an IDE. I'm running it here inside a terminal inside VS Code, and it has some integration there, but it's not quite as nice as what Copilot and Kurtzer have in terms of being integrated inside the IDE. I think that, you know, it looks like there's a lot of similar stuff, but how the AI actually, and I think this is probably baked into the system prompt for each of these things, how they actually tackle tasks uh, is really important. Now, we're gonna see after what the results were. So this is fun to just kinda watch along as these things go. Um, what I'm gonna do is kinda skip to the end as we can see that these are pretty much, you know, Claude Code's pretty much done here, um, but Cursor and Copilot take a little longer. I will tell you, Claude Code was the winner in terms of speed, Cursor was a little bit better, um, but then Copilot took the longest. Um, and I think it, 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 the, both, of, both Cursor and Copilot spent a long time iterating on the MCP server, trying to create the content models and the component models and understanding how they link together. And some of that could be actually improved by um, in additional documentation inside the Agility CMS MCP server so that you know, in the schema documentation, in its tool documentation, it could you know, describe that maybe a little bit better, but you can see. Claude code is done. Um, so we'll see how the other two do. Um, I'm gonna come back and, and do a sort of a regular screen share and go through each one and we'll see how they all did. So this is really exciting what's happened here. We have three different tools that all did, I think, a really good job. Obviously, I think Claude code is the clear winner here. I don't think it has the best integration with the development environment yet. I do like how both Cursor and Copilot show you the differences in your code, but Claude was super fast. It had actually followed the prompt, which is a fairly complex prompt, uh, the closest of any of them. Certainly, when you look at what it actually did inside Agility, that's really exciting. So I'm gonna go through all three of these. Copilot made the biggest gaffe where it couldn't figure out the personalized content enough. So it did do a nice job of keeping things on tabs, which I did like. It created a whole new component model for me, which I didn't ask it to do. Um, it didn't do a great job 
with the personalized content. So I went through all of these and added, uh, just added some content in here to kind of see what it does. So it was nice for, it did a pretty good job of repeating the fields that we needed, but then it just gave me a text field for the personalization and I really wanted a drop down field that linked to our audiences list. So didn't quite do it there. Let's look at cursor. In cursor, we didn't get the nice tabs. It also created, uh, it, just a, it just created a copy of our, I, I think, of, yeah, it just created a copy in cursor. So it didn't, uh, it, sorry, it, ju it just changed the component model. It didn't create a whole new version of it. But it took away my tabs. Um, my background type still works. But you can see here, it, it did a nice job of linking over to the audience's list so I can choose an audience. So I did like that. So it didn't follow my instruction to just um, sort of update the current uh, component model and it got rid of all my tabs, but it did link nicely for the linked, for the linked content for my audiences. Looking at um, Claude, it also created an, an update here. So we had to create a whole new component model. It did keep things on tabs, which was quite nice. It also kept um, you know, all, like all the extra little details. And then it did a really nice job of the personalization over here um, and linking over to, to my audience's list. So in terms of setting up the component model using the MCP server, uh, definitely Cursor and Claude did the best. Copilot wasn't too bad, but you can, I, if you remember from the video, it tried a whole bunch of different times. Now, let's look at the actual code and what it actually built in each of them. And I wanna look at each in between, but I will say I did go in and made a couple little tweaks because I found that there was a couple little gaps here and there, which is just a sign that when you're building with AI, your main job is to be a code reviewer and, and you have to do a lot of little fixing. Sometimes it's faster to just manually fix stuff. Sometimes you can let AI fix stuff for you. So here we go. Let's jump into some of this code. So I'm in Visual Studio Code here and we're looking at uh, let's let's look at what cursor updated for us. Okay, I guess I probably should look at this in cursor, but it doesn't really matter. So you can see I had to fix it. Used the 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 background hero. I linked it to the personalized personalized hero here. Let's actually run this and see what it did for us. So if I'm just running this, um, you can see we're, we're we're sort of faking the audience here. Normally this would be set like in a cookie or something like that, but we wanted to make it um, super easy to see this. So you can see here we've got this. The default content, which it kept for us, which was really nice because it just updated that component for us, but it did rename the component. And then we, uh, if we change it to healthcare, which I actually filled it out for, we can see all the stuff comes through. So it does a pretty nice job. There was just that one little gaffe that it made um, in, in not sort of linking the background hero that it updated to the personalized hero. So that was Cursor uh, that did a pretty good job. Let's uh, undo these, actually I'm going to commit these changes because I, I want to keep them. <laughs> I'll, keep, I'll put those on the cursor branch and then I'm going to switch over to Claude. So we'll see what Claude did here, what this actually comes through as. So we've got slightly different content. So Claude did create a new uh, copy of our component model for us, which we didn't want, but it did a good job at creating that. And you can see here, pulls in the content nicely um, from the healthcare stuff. So I really like that. Our third place finisher, which I think didn't do quite as nice a job in terms of linking the content properly is Copilot. But it did actually work because what it did is it actually looked at this text value and linked it up there. And I think that was the idea for us for us on that one. So when we see the all the audience content that's there and then the, let's just see, maybe it's not working. No, it's not working for the healthcare content at all. So that did not work um, for that. So. Definitely a little disappointed in what we saw from Copilot because Copilot is my normal tool that I actually use most often. But I think there's some opportunity there to optimize that MCP server in terms of the documentation. If you're working with MCP servers, I would advise you provide feedback to the developers of those um, because how you actually document those is providing the hints which are essentially training for the large language models that are doing that. So some really interesting learnings there. I think we did a great job of testing out a bunch of different tools for generating personalized components um, in Next.js and Headless CMS, coding with AI. It's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this video. There's a whole lot of things we learned. I certainly am gonna look a lot more into Claude code. I hadn't used a CLI coding tool that much before, but it certainly it's pretty awesome and does some great stuff. And I can't wait to experiment more and to try out some different things. Thanks for joining me on this AI journey and we'll talk to you again.